Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to go over using the Z index CSS property in order to stack elements one on top of the other. And pretty easy to do, especially if you've already used position properties. So I've got a blank web page set up here, doc type definition for HTML5, uh, nothing much in the head section, character encoding meta. I'm going to do some internal styles in just a moment. The body of my page contains nothing, so I'm going to go ahead and put something in here. Uh, I'm going to create a parent container. And within this parent container, I'll go ahead and make three uh, boxes. A red box, a blue box, and last but not least, a yellow box. Okay, so I've got these three boxes here. Go ahead and save that. I'm going to head up to the styles and start to set some properties. So for all of these boxes, you're going to have some, uh, some similar characteristics. And that might be, um, how about their width is going to be 250 pixels, height 250 pixels, and they're all going to be position absolute. There we go. That's pretty good for now. Now the container that they're in, I'm going to go ahead and make that position relative because I'm going to position these colored boxes here absolutely within their relatively positioned container. So basically I'm using relative position in the container because I want the container to be where it's naturally going to be. And just so we can really see this container, I'll go ahead and give it a border, 10 pixels solid and black. And I'll do a hex code for that. And how about a little margin? All right, so let's see how things are looking so far. You jump over to my browser here. Actually, I will back over to my editor and simply choose, I'm using Notepad++, I'll do Run and Launch in Firefox. And here we go. Now we're we're noticing our first real issue. I say, wait a minute, is something wrong? Well, yeah, something is wrong, but um, nothing with really with the way we've written stuff. So this black box right here is actually my border for my container all kind of squished up together. So in order to really see what's going on here, I've got to put in some background colors on those interior boxes, those colored boxes. I never did that. And we've also got to set the height of this container. So I've got the um, the container established, but I need to give it some dimension here. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a height of 400 pixels. And now I need to set the colors for the red, blue, and yellow boxes. There we go. And just to make things a little bit quicker, I'm going to just go ahead and repeat that. But of course, we have our blue box and our yellow box. And we'll do a 0, 9 for the blue and a 9, 0 for the yellow. Let's see what this is looking like. OK, so now we can start to see where some of these are. But you might be wondering, where's the red and where's the, um, where's the blue? Well, they're actually all on top of each other. We just really can't see them. Remember, all of these three colored boxes are positioned absolute. And by default, they're going to want to be in the top left corner, zero from the left, zero from the top of their parent container. Their parent container, of course, is this black bordered box. So check this out. If I go to my red box and I put in something like um, left 20 pixels and top 20 pixels, now you'll start to see it peeking out from behind that yellow box. And I know I didn't pick a really good color for yellow, but let's just pretend that that's yellow. All right, so that's interesting. Now, what if I go to the blue box and I say, you know what, I'm going to position this uh, 20 pixels from the right, and, um, and I'll do 20 pixels from the top also. There we go, blue box is over there. And for yellow box, I'll position that 300 pixels from the left 
and how about 40 pixels from the bottom. Excellent. So now we can really start to see where these boxes are and how they fit within their container, that black bordered box. Now in order to create a little overlap here, I'm going to go back up to my container and I'm going to set my container width to 600 pixels. Let's see what that does. There we go. So we start to get a little bit of overlap now. I'm going to take that yellow box and move it a little bit to the left by just having it less from the left than it was before. And I'll also go to that red box and move it a little bit more to the right by giving it a bigger number from the left here. So how about if I try 60 pixels? Excellent. So now we start to see some overlap. And naturally that's just occurring. Um, the yellow box was typed in last, but we can kind of manipulate this a bit here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my red box and I'm going to put in Z index of 10, blue box, Z index of 30, and yellow box, Z index of 20. There we go. So my blue box has a Z index of 30, so it's the topmost box. And it goes whatever the bigger number is on top. So 10, the red box would be at the bottom, even if it was more over. So let, let me change this over to 100 pixels, and I'll change that to 50 pixels from the top, so it'll give us even more overlap here. So we can see blue boxes on top of yellow, yellow is on top of red. And if I change some of these numbers around, like red box is now a 30, blue box is 20, oops, wrong button, blue box is 20, and yellow box is 10, we should now see yellow box behind everything. There we go. Red is 30, blue is 20, yellow is 10. Now you don't have to do 10, 20, 30 like I did. You could have done 1, 2, 3. Um, I will encourage you though, use bigger numbers with things, you know, with lots of space in the middle. So that way if you create a fourth element, you can simply insert it where you want it to and you don't have to go and renumber all of your elements. So using the Z index property is really easy. Just use your positioned your position property for elements and then use Z index to control the stacking of those elements.